guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to huga. What is huga? Uh, it sounds like a really odd word, but it is actually a Danish saying that means quality of coziness and comfortable conviviality. So that's a mouthful. <laughs> Basically what it is, is the art of coziness. That is the closest kind of definition that we can get to as Americans in this language. So in Sweden, in um, Denmark, in you know places other than America where uh, people can actually relax, slow down, observe their surroundings, their weather, Scandinavia and places that are cold, they have a lot less sunlight there. They have a lot less um, of that happy kind of vitamin D that you get from sunshine. And you know, even here in America, we get that seasonal affective disorder, which a lot of people kind of feel down in the dumps, they get the Christmas blues, they get sad, and suicide rates go up, and it's just a very rough time of year for some people. So in Scandinavia and colder climes, they have this philosophy that if you are creating an environment that is comfortable, that is bright, that is cozy without being artificial, harsh, noisy, busy, then your kind of inside will reflect the outside. <laughs> so basically you're feeling good from the outside in. And I think that's a really neat concept. Um, I never really thought about the philosophy behind what I was doing and trying to create in my surroundings until recently when I was looking up, you know, different things, different styles and decorations and things that I could use. And I kept coming back to this word, huga, and I was like, okay, well maybe that's something I should look into if, uh, if I'm gravitating towards this concept and these decorations. So when I bought this hat, when we bought the house, I came to Rob and said, you know, I really want to do very neutral colors. Um, in the past, I've always wanted bold, artistic kind of colors, but recently, like I said, after having children, <laughs> when my life became insane, um, I wanted to do a little bit more neutral tones and less design and just, you know, striking items, items that were a little bit more quality versus quantity. So a lot of like wood, a lot of um, soft fabrics became appealing to me. And that's really what a huga environment looks like. So let me go back a little bit since I got a little sidetracked. So huga, again, is this kind of feeling of contentment, well-being, coziness, warmth. But it's not just about how you're feeling personally. Um, the Danish in particular and Scandinavians, they really, really like to give back. So this feeling of, or this idea of hearth and home and sharing that coziness and well-being with other people. So I think that is a really nice concept for this time of year and, you know, specifically um, because you're hitting on a lot of things all at once. You know, you're correcting or maybe preventing seasonal defective, affective disorder. You're giving back to other people, which will again help how you feel inside. And you're just making this beautiful environment for yourself and your family as well. So anyone who comes through your door will also feel this huga and this coziness. So it's taking pleasure in simple things. You know, we are so busy in our lives. We're so busy. The modern family, the modern working woman, the modern working man, even teenagers are suffering from a lot more stress, from a lot more um, distractions in you know, technology, society, um, our work and play environment. So if we are creating like a very stable, calming environment at home, it might help how we feel and how we act and you kind of just touch on all of our the parts of our lives, which is what this concept is really about. Um, in fact, if you go to Denmark and Sweden and Scandinavia, they are some of the happiest people on the planet. <laughs> they just have this inner calm and sense of well-being that just kind of radiates outward. But it's important with this concept not to get too overboard because 
If you take it too far, it will not be huga anymore, and it'll be hedonism, straight hedonism, which is a little bit too much indulgence for me personally. If you have too much indulgence, it becomes more about a little bit more selfish and a little bit more... a little less spiritual, I guess, is what I'm trying to say, because this is something that I think um, is a lifestyle, and if you're doing it properly, it will just balance you on the inside. Um, but if you are overindulging in everything, then I think that you'll become a little bit less happy inwardly and that will in turn create stress and your environment will become something different. So limit how much indulgence you take for yourself. Remember, it's about giving back to other people. So some of the ways that I've incorporated it are through the images that I will show you in this video. So my surroundings, obviously, lots of soft fabrics, like you can see on my backboard behind me here. That is actually a throw, the faux fur throw that I put on my headboard because my headboard was a metal kind of wire work headboard and it's, it's nice, but I really wanted something softer. Um, so I put this throw on the back of that just on a whim to see if it would help change the feeling texture of the room and it really warmed everything up and made it um, more interesting as well because of the texture that is there. So lots of different natural type textures, throws, wools, um, any natural textures and fabrics that you can get that have a little bit of design or pattern to them but still remain neutral in color those will really work well. Um, also, I have faux fur blankets on the bed. You can't really see it too well, but I'll show you in the video. Um, I have two different colors on the bed. There's white and gray, and that adds like a really neat like layered effect, like a very Viking type of effect, which is what I um, am kind of going for in the house, just under undertones of Viking decor. Um, Lots of natural wood, grays, whites, dark and light browns. Um, I don't really want anything too colorful because that actually just, it just doesn't make me feel calm. It makes me feel too anxious and, you know, just when, when I come in here, I just feel like I'm ready to go to sleep to, or to relax and unwind which is exactly what you want your bedroom to feel like. If you're coming into your room and, and it's so busy, you're looking around, you're like feeling creative and inspired, that's good, but not for a bedroom. So if that's how you feel when you walk into your bedroom, like you wanna keep staying up and working or playing or whatever it is that you're doing, you might wanna rethink how your bedroom design works. Um, if, if, that's, if you're okay with that, if you're coming into your room for those purposes, then that's another story. But since we have this house and I have rooms for, you know, separate things, this room I wanted to be all about, you know, sleep and re relaxation. So I think I really um, did manage to do that in this room, which I'm really happy about. So other ways that I have incorporated Huga is through pillows, blankets, um, candles and soft lights. Um, you'll see in the video that I have a rose quartz um, Himalayan rock lamp and I really love that for you know adding that soft mood like right before I go to sleep if I want to read or look at my phone or whatever it is that I'm doing before bed you know getting ready for bed I like turning that on and it really makes some um, like that kind of quiet mood. Also with any lamps that you get, make sure they're the warm white lamps and not like the artificial halogen because some of those are a little bit too white or blue and that will create like a whole different effect altogether and not like a calming effect for your lighting. So another way that I have incorporated Huga is through organization, which might sound a little strange, but think about when you go to um, Ikea. So if you've ever been to Ikea, Everything is very plain, organized, um, there's bins for everything, there's, you know, uh, hooks that you can hang things on, um, just there's kind of a, like a place for everything, and if you do that in your house, you'll know where everything is, so you're not, when you're rushing last minute, you can come in, grab something, and go. Now, some people are the creative, messy type, which I kind of still am in some areas of my life, um, but I used to be this way where I would just have kind of 
organized piles or messes everywhere. I knew where things were but nobody else did. <laughs> Even that is stressful because there are times where you'll either forget or you'll send somebody else to get something and they'll be like, I have no idea where this thing is. It's buried under so much other stuff. So when everything is kind of like in the open and um, organized in a way that is easy to find, it makes your life easier and in turn it causes you less stress. So if you have ever read of or heard of Zen or minimalism or other kinds of organizational philosophies, um, hookah really fits into that as well because the, the more you have going on around you, the more cluttered your mind is. And it's very true that, you know, the less you have out um, to look at for your eyes to rove on as you're looking around, then the more you can think about other things, I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, bullet journaling is another way that I have found that helps me kind of organize my thoughts and keep myself... Um, on task for what I need to do for upcoming weeks and f for um, just anything that I need to make a list for. I can keep it all in one place. So I've been doing this and it changes every week um, and I will write different things you know for different weeks but I can also keep all of my lists in one convenient kind of place. So you can see this one I started trying to get a little bit more colorful and creative. Um, as I was making a list for things that I needed in the house and things that I wanted to clean. And I mean, you can really just kind of go with whatever your imagination wants to do in a bullet journal, which I like. There's no, there's no set hard rules, so you can do all kinds of creative things. And like I said, what was more attractive to me was that I could keep everything in one place. Like if I needed to make a list, okay, pull out my bullet journal and make a list and I know I'll, I'll look at it again and I won't just put it somewhere in the back of my bag and forget about it. Another way to incorporate huga in your life is to bring in nature. So any kind of wood, stones, um, you know, anything from outside, flowers, um, anything that you might bring in or your children might bring in like rocks that have like a interesting effect or look to them um, you can put those on display and it will just make your whole room that they're in just feel really natural and earthy and just feel really calming for me personally i brought in twigs and i put that around my candle holder and it added like a really neat textured effect. You can also take the twigs and put them in designs, um, weave them into wreaths, put them onto your walls. If you like, um, you know, more of a home and hearth like style for your decor. Bed and any kind of needlework, if you crochet or sew, a lot of that would look really nice in a huga room as well because it adds that texture to pillows, blankets, um, you know, whatever it is that you are creating. There is a book on Huga. It has apparently become a very popular thing. So if you're inclined, if you're interested, um, I would check out the book. It's called The Book of Huga, and it's spelled H-Y-G-G-E, um, not, you know, how it sounds like Huga. <laughs> um, but the author, Louisa Thompson Britz, um, the way that she defines Huga is a practical way of creating sanctuary in the middle of very real life. So that's something I think that all of us can use, something that could be some at least a, a different way to think about how we are designing our surroundings because I think that's the last thing on people's minds when they design a room is how can I make this more practical you know a more practical sanctuary for myself and my family like usually you think like oh what colors do I like and how would this look this artwork look over this table you know you don't really think about what psychological effect is this going to have on my family and my children <laughs> so uh, but I think if we do start thinking that way it really goes a long way to how we feel in a space so whatever you know you're designing just kind of think about you know is there is this really going to make everyone feel calm and at ease or is this going to make them feel really anxious and like they're going to have some kind of meltdown?
but it's also all about gratitude and again this is the perfect time of year to think about stuff like this so um, just try to be thankful for everything that you have and you know you can reflect and think um, when you're incorporating huga. I know that I, since I started designing this way, I've been okay with just sitting in complete silence and thinking, which is something I hadn't done since maybe I was in my last year of high school. <laughs> and ever since then, my life kind of picked up and it's just been crazy and I've been going and going and not really taking the time to reflect, to think about things. And um, when your space is so calming, you're okay with just sitting there in that silence and, and thinking sometimes, which is, I think everybody needs that. And a lot of you might be like, oh God, that's so boring. But really, it, it does make you feel better. And especially when you have a problem that you're trying to work out in, in your mind, you know, it can really be helpful to have this type of space. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you um, try to incorporate at least one of these techniques into your daily routine or life. Uh, I think that it's something all of us, again, should think about and um, to add like that other dimension onto our thinking and way of life um, so that we are better on the inside as well as our environment on the outside. So please leave in the comments below if you've ever tried huga or minimalis minimalism or zen um, kind of techniques in your home and how they worked out for you. Um, and please comment if you've read the book on huga and if there's anything um, else about it that I could find out. I'm really interested in the topic, so I'm gonna keep reading and researching it. So um, if there's anything that you can add there, please leave that in the comments below. And please like the video if you enjoyed it, and you feel free to share it. I'm going to make more videos like this, so I'm going to make more Huga videos and coziness type of style videos um, for those that are interested, so please check back at my channel. And thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.